Hi and welcome to this fourth and final video from the vectors section of the course and in the last video we looked at how we can apply vectors to geometric proofs in this one we're going to be have looking at how we can apply it to problems that involve mechanics. So on we go let's have a look at a problem involving speed vectors velocity time and all that kind of stuff so there it is we've got a ship moving with a constant velocity that's described in terms of a vector and we're given a position vector of where it is relative to a lighthouse now again that's quite a lot to process in one go. So what I'm going to do is turn it into a diagram. So we've got our lighthouse, which I'm going to refer to as the origin. So everything's going to be relative to that. And what we've got is our ship is at some point to begin with. So when t equals zero, it's starting, I'm going to say it's down here somewhere, where I've got this position vector, which I'm calling xi plus yj. I don't know what that is. I'm just using, using x and y for now. And for each hour it moves, that's where we're going to be using the velocity because this is saying it's moving minus 3i plus 2j for each hour. So that's across 3 in this direction up to each hour that it moves. So the ship's going to be doing something like that. And what I'm going to do now is call the position of the ship uh, B. So its position vector is OB. Now, how can I describe OB in terms of the vectors that I know? Well, OB is going to be OA plus AB. So it's that one there, plus AB. And so that gives me uh, XI plus YJ plus, now this vector here, if it's going minus 3I plus 2J each hour, that's going to be minus 3I plus 2J times by T. Now, that's a little bit complicated, so what I'm going to do is just tidy it up a little bit and bring together all my horizontal components, so like the I components, I've got X minus 3T lots of I, and I've got Y plus 2 J T, sorry, 2t lots of j. So what I'm going to just split that out into the i and j components. So that's my vector ob. And I also know that when t equals 6, so I'm given that in the question at time t equals 6, the position vector is there, minus 4i minus 7j. So let's plug in that piece of information. So we've got ob minus 4i minus 7j. t is 6, so plug those and you can see what's going on there. And so what we've got is those two vectors there have got to be the same. So again, now what we're going to do is have a look at the same trick that we pulled in the last video. I'm going to say, well, if these two vectors are the same, that means x minus 18 has got to be the same as minus 4, because I've got to have the same amounts of i components here as I've got over here, which therefore gives me x equals 14. And if we do exactly the same with the j's, so let's have a look at what we've got over here. We've got minus 7 lots of j here and y plus 12 over here. So we've got that. That gives us y equals minus 19. So now what we've got is our vector OB. If we just put those values 14 minus 19 back in, we've got OB. So this basically represents um, the position of the ship at any point in time. So as the ship moves for any given value to any point in time after it starts, its position is being described by this vector here, which is now in terms of t. Okay, last step is then to chuck in this, because it's what we're being asked for is what happens when t equals 2, what's the distance of the ship from the lighthouse? So let's plug in the values when t equals 2, that gives me ob is all of that, so I've just replaced the t with 2 in both of those vectors. And so we've got minus, try again, sorry, we've got 8i minus 15j. Now, here we've got to be a little bit careful because we might be thinking, okay, yeah, I've done, I've got the vector, I know where the, uh, the ship is, or I know the vector of OB, but what we're being asked for very clearly is the distance. All right, we're not being asked for the position vector, we've been asked for the distance. So we need to know, okay, well, if the ship, let's let's imagine it's somewhere here, what is that distance there? And clearly the way to do that is to find the magnitude of the vector, and that's essentially the difference between this thing distance, which is that, which is how far away it is, compared to displacement, which is essentially the vector. So what we're going to do is find a magnitude, which means doing a bit of Pythagoras. So we've got 8 squared plus 15 squared. And so that means the ship is 17 kilometers away from the lighthouse. OK, moving on, we had a look at one uh, involving velocity and distance and so on. Let's now have a look at a vector question that involves forces. So we've got a particle being acted on by two forces, F1 and F2. And they're both being defined in terms of Newtons there. And it's F2 that's the one that's going to cause a few issues because we've got as uh, Pi plus 2Pj, where P is just some value, whatever it is. Right. First question says, find the angle between F2 and J, which is obviously the vertical unit vector. 
So there's J. And if again we draw a little sketch, we can see, okay, there's our force F2 going off in this direction because we know that that vertical distance there is P, that horizontal distance is, uh, sorry, did I say P? I meant 2P. This one is P as defined by a vector. So we just need to calculate the angle there. So a little bit of trig. Hopefully we can see what's going to happen here. The P's are going to cancel out. So that's going to become 10 to the minus 1 over half. And so that angle is 26.6 degrees. Okay. So that's the first bit done. Second part says the resultant of F1 and F2 is R. And we know that R is going off in a particular direction. It's parallel to this vector here. So again, let's have a look at what's happening. So R is F1 plus F2. So let's add these two vectors together. There they are. And again, just tidy it up a little bit. So we've got all the I. So we've got 1 plus P lots of I here and minus 3 plus 2p lots of j. So we've split it into our two components, horizontal and vertical. And now this is where we're using the fact that it's parallel to this one, because what I'm going to do is say, well, if they're parallel, that's what's going on. So I've got my vector here, 8i plus 6j going that way. We know that our resultant is going in the same direction. So if we put in the bits of information we know about those two vectors, there's uh, 8i plus 6j, there's R, so we've got the two component bits and so now what we've got essentially are similar triangles because we know these triangles here this triangle here is just a multiple of this one so we say well if I do that divided by that eight sorry six over eight would be the same as minus three plus two p over one plus p and what that does is allows us to form an equation saying well kind of that ratio there that fraction is the same as that fraction now do some multiplying out of the one plus p and a bit of tidying up take the eight over there the one plus p over there We've got an equation in P, and so it turns out that P equals 3. Job done, all sorted.